Any question up to here? The recurrence form, you know. All right. Now the next thing, uh, which is slightly more complicated than this variation, but uh, what we want to show is that uh, this two recurrence formula can be applied to non-integer power, non-integer order also, because uh, this derivation is based on the generating function, which give you all the integer order of the J sub n, okay? But uh, the same relationship, this two can be applied to any, any order. So, and again, there are different ways to show that. Um, one way to show that you can apply this to for any order is to work out using this two, assuming you have this two relationship uh, for any order. And then using this two relationship to show that all the, that the basal function that satisfies this two uh, relation is uh, satisfied the basal equation. So that's one way to do that. So uh, let's just, and it's not just J, it can be other basal function also. Let's, uh, let's just copy this two relationship and start from here. So you have two, uh, the textbook using, using, because it's more general, you can use Z instead of J. So Z represent any basal function. Like uh, later on, we will introduce the Neumann function. Instead of J, you have Y, or some people call it N. That doesn't matter. Or the later on, we'll introduce the Hankel function, which is a combination of J and Y. So N is Z with new order, so new minus one plus Z to new plus one equals to two mu divided by x to mu. And then the second one is z mu minus one minus z mu plus one equals to two z mu point the derivative. Okay, so we start, this is the starting point. And we want to use this to show that uh, Z satisfied the Bessel equation. Let's write down the Bessel equation, which is from, I think the first equation, but the, or the first 14.14, repeating that in here. So you have X square for Z is C, sub new double point, and then plus X. Is a new pi plus x square minus u square. Is a new. That's the that's the basic equation, right? Right. Uh, what we want to do is to use this two and show that j actually this is the j. Z. Z. No, Z new satisfy this uh, basic equation. Okay. Uh, uh, that again, the process can be a, there are many different ways. I, I mean, the textbook show one way to do it, but uh, in the process, it's actually using 14.12. So, first, assuming you can derive 14.12. But this equation is the equation I said, I, I give it like a, an exercise for you. So, so I, I mean, there are other way to do that. Let's try the other way. Okay. Uh, because uh, these are all involving J mu or J mu pi and J mu double pi. I can start with the right hand side because I have uh, Z mu, I have Z mu and Z mu pi here. And I can use this two to express everything in terms of the, the combination of Z, Z nu plus one or Z nu minus one. 
and because you have double derivative, um, you will also involve j nu plus two and j nu minus two because you need one one more derivative. And so what we can do is uh, say, uh, and then express all all these terms in terms of the Bessel function only. Uh, but the, the Bessel equation involves all the x. I want to get rid of all the x because uh, x is not Bessel function. So it's just uh, involving in the Bessel equation. I want to get rid of all the x. And to get rid of all the x, you have uh, z divided by x. If you have z divided by x, then you can in terms of Bessel function only get rid of the x. So whenever z, is z over x, then uh, it's, uh, pop, it's possible to get rid of the x. So let's substitute that in here. So I want, instead of multiply x, x squared here, I want to have uh, divided by x. So let's divide everything by x squared, every term by x squared, so get rid of this one, if this becomes, Z nu prime by x, get rid of this one. Yeah. Okay, we got, uh, and now I start using the uh, recurrence formula. So the first, uh, for this term, the easiest is this uh, Z nu term, because Z nu is already Z nu. I, I want that, I want to keep all the Bessel function. Okay, so this term is okay. Now you have z nu prime divided by x. If you use this one, then you don't, I mean, you can do it either way. Uh, okay. z nu prime over x. I can use this one. This is one half z nu minus one minus z new plus one and then you have one of x and divided by x okay then uh then you have z over x i can use this one now all right and this one you have a two all right so you divide by two the other side you have one four for the first term, z mu minus one, so you have z mu minus one. So you divide it by mu minus one. Right, and then, so if this change the mu minus one, this is a mu minus two. And this, you have mu minus one plus one, so this is z mu. Okay, so that takes care of the first term. All right, now let's do the same thing for the second term. So now this mu becomes mu plus one, so you divide it by mu plus one. And then this is mu plus one, so the first term is z mu. And this is uh, z mu plus two. All right, so this is this term. Now this becomes all as a function. There's no x, no. okay, get rid of all the x. So you take care of this term and this term. All right. Now, let's see. What the other term? So you, you need the double prime. The double prime, you can take the derivative of this one. You see, new double prime is divided one by one half. And that gives you z new minus one prime minus z new plus one prime. Right, take a derivative of this, this relation. So that gives you second derivative. 
you know, in terms of first derivatives. Okay. Now you use the same thing again because these are prime, right? You use it again. So, so another two, so you have a factor one fourth. And for this one, using this one, so this becomes new minus one. So you have z new minus two minus z new. And then for the second term, this, this becomes new plus one. This becomes z new. This becomes z new plus two. Right. But this term, this term also expressing as a function on here. So you get this one, this one, this one. So the last one is this one. Right. So you have a unit new square z new of x square. Okay. Uh, all right, so one of them can use the new z new of x, right? You have z new new of x, so that can be a new of x and divided by two, and then that becomes z new minus one plus z new plus one. All right, just use this, just use this one, one time. The new z new over x. Okay. okay. Now again, you have all this z divided by x. Again, you need to use it again another time. Right. And then new. And when you use it another term, you need to divide it by two. Okay. New over four. And then the first term is, uh, so the first term is this become new minus one, so you need to divide by new minus one. And then this, the left hand side, this, this is actually exactly this one, right? Because uh, this is this, this one divided by x, right? So this is z minus two. Okay, and then you have plus this one. And new plus one, and then you know, this using this again. Okay, exactly this one. Okay. You got everything. Now I have everything in terms of basal function, right? This one and this one. This is all the basal function, and then did this one, right? Now I need to group them together, right? So I add the same, add everything, and not add everything because this is minus. I mean, I can write this as minus, minus, and minus. Okay, so the, what the process is you have this plus this and then plus C new and then minus it all. So, all right. So that looks horrible, right? <laughs> because uh, you have not all the terms. So, uh, what you can do is uh, one, one at a time. I mean, that depends on your preference. If you want to write it down, add, add it up in a single equation, that's fine too. But if you want to just do it one at a time, uh, you can check a few of them and check all of them. Actually, you need to check all of them, but uh, you can like uh, check new plus two term, group all the new plus two term, right? Get all the new plus two term. So the Z new has this one. So you have one fourth, the first term give you one fourth, which is a plus sign. And the second term is this one, 
the C new plus Q term is this one. So you have, you have minus, the first term is one. You already have a one four minus V plus one. But this term, this term you don't have that because this is a C sub new. But this one, the new plus two term is plus one over. Wait, no, you have this minus minus new minus new multiplied by that one divided by uh, new plus one. So that's the, the coefficient of the new plus two term, right? Right. I just said right z new plus two term. Okay. So let's let's check that. And one for oh, just the coefficient. And now this is one minus group this two together. This is new plus one. And then you have one plus new in the numerator. So this is just one, one minus one is zero. That is zero. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I group all the terms and then if you add them up into this equation, I look at the z coefficient uh, of the z to the new plus two term, and then I show that is zero. Okay, I can do this. Other terms now. Uh, let's go a little bit over here. How would you have the Subscript. Like, so, why, why does having a superscript version help us with this? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but that's yeah, suppose. Okay. I'm just writing too fast. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So, that, that's, that's a good catch. All right. Uh, now, the next one is uh, uh, well, all the on the C plus new plus two, and you can do the new plus one. Uh, yeah, you can do the. We don't have new plus one, uh, right? We have new plus two. We get rid of all the new plus one, right? No new plus one, so that's fine. And you can do the Z new and Z minus two. Let's do the Z minus new minus two, right? Z to the new minus two. I mean, it should be exactly, I mean, very similar uh, for this one. Uh, one for, for the first term, you get just one, likewise, you get one. For the second term, you get uh, one over new minus one. You don't have that from this term. You have the last term is minus new over four divided by new minus one. Minus new divided by new minus one. Right? And that's it. And so you can see that this, you combine this term, this from one minus new divided by new minus one, so negative one. So negative one plus one is zero, so that is also zero. So check this two, right? Okay, now the final term is all the Z new. That becomes the most complicated one, right? For this term, so uh, you always have uh, one fourth, this term, you have minus two, right? And then for this term, for this term, you have uh, one over C plus one, I see one over C minus one. And then this is minus one. Okay. 
we're taking care of this term. And then this term is just one, actually four, because we divided by four. This term is just four. And the final is this term. So you have minus mu. And the first term, the one over mu minus one. And this, this term is uh, minus mu. Right, this term and this term. Right, now see what you got. Yeah. Uh, four minus two is two. And then you have uh, combined this two. You have one minus new divided by new minus one, so it's minus one. And then the minus one plus new divided by one plus new is another minus one. That equals to zero. Okay. So you check that if Z satisfies this two, then you substitute into this equation, the basic equation is exactly zero. Okay, so you, that is a one process to show that the, the recurrent relation, the two recurrent relations can derive the basic equation.